All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. I am Josue Pavone. I'm joined by Cedric Maxwell. We've got plenty to talk about around the NBA. I mean, where? We can go different directions here, right? We can go uh, Kevin Durant. There's a report saying that Kevin Durant was reached out, uh, or, or Steph Curry reached out to Kevin Durant, rather, about potentially coming back. We'll get into that in a little bit. Also, uh, a former Celtic calls out LeBron James for his comments about Brittany Griner, who's uh, in custody in, in, over in Russia. We'll get into that as well, but let's keep it local, right, Max? Let's, 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 uh, let's get these Celtics fans up to date here. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon, Daniel Gallinari, officially introduced as a member of the Boston Celtics this week mm-hmm. at the Hour Back Center, man. There was plenty to take away from it. Brad Stevens making the jokes about how he's been, he's had eyes for, for Malcolm Brogdon since he was a, a teenager, right? He was trying to recruit him to come to Butler and obviously it didn't work out, but he's happy to have him now. Uh, as a member of the Celtics, although he won't be able to coach him, of course, uh, he, he is a, a guy that that Brad Stevens has had eyes on, or, or someone that he's um, always admired from afar. So, uh, of course, there was a lot of talk about that. Danilo Gallinari talking about how he was uh, his father was, grew up a huge Celtics fan, a huge Larry Bird guy. Uh, he was watching games as a kid back in, in Italy. Uh, you know, probably saw some of your games too, Max. But he, he was he was raised a Celtics fan, I guess. Uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. You know, Malcolm Brogdon talking about how his grandfather was a huge Bill Russell fan and someone that uh, he learned a whole lot about growing up, what Bill Russell meant to the league and to the game of basketball. So they're saying all the right things, Max, of course. And everyone's wondering, is, is this the deepest team or one of the deepest teams in the NBA? Where do you fall in that conversation? Um, I think it's a deep squad. When you think about who they are and what they can do, uh, you know, obviously you bring in Brogdon. He said the right things the other day. Look, I'm not here trying to compete with Marcus Smart. I'm here to win a right. championship. So the right things are being said. Uh, Gallinari, a guy who wants to, you know, be around to win a championship, who's been in the league, who's made money, um, came up, start, started out with the Knicks and has moved around to different teams. But he brings the ability to knock down shots and overpower smaller guys. He's legitimate, probably about 6'9" maybe 6'10", can shoot the ball from the outside. So what that would do, would do, it would insulate Tatum. It would insulate Brown. So if you fell off one of those guys, you kick it out to a guy like Gallinari who can knock down shots uh, for with, with some consistent uh, um, uh, form in the shot. So, so I, I like what the Celtics have. I like what Brad has done. Uh, I still wish they had spent that seventeen million dollars if they if they are. Now. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, they got a, they got the weekend, I, would, I guess. They got a couple. Of days, couple of days. You know, obviously not my money, but I would like to bring somebody in with, with a little toughness, uh, somebody who has a little edge to him. And uh, we talked before, you know, about different guys. You think about guys who have an edge to them. Um, you know, Morris would be Morris Senior uh, would be the yeah. guy. Think about my guy. who can still knock down shots from the outside and just doesn't take a lot of shit. And you, you, you've you <laughs> seen him over the years. He's always been in a skirmish and, and the Celtics need a little bit of edge to him. Uh, you he's know, not letting, he's not letting opponents to the huddle, right? He's not. No, 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 no. He's not, <laughs> he's not doing that. So I think that the Celtics would love to, if you could get him and bring him in with a little edge, I would, I would like that uh, with his ability to, to get out, knock down shots, but also to get up in guys' face, make it a little bit more yeah. comfortable for, for guys in this league. And the, this league is now so much like a gentleman's league. Like, okay, let me help you to your chair. Hey, the, your seat this way. Let me be the maitre d'. And, uh, you know, I <laughs> think be like that if you're playing yeah. winning basketball. Let's take pictures at the all-white party, even though you, uh, you knocked my ass out of the play, uh, NBA final. Mm-hmm. It's all love. Yeah. Anyways, I digress. Ain't that much, no, ain't with that you, much, Max. Ain't that much love in the world right now, man, when I think about that. <laughs> I, my broadcast partner, Sean Grandy, we were, right after Golden State won it um, in Boston. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Max. You're saying you wouldn't be taking pictures with James Worthy? Like, what's up, man? Yeah, man, it's all good. Uh, we had, uh, after the game, uh, obviously the Celtics had lost, and so we're wrapping up our postseason, our season. And uh, Sean is going on and talking. And then finally gets to the point at the end, uh, he it finishes. And then he said, we have some cameos that we've done, like the cameos where you you get paid to say something. Happy to some, birthday or Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, yeah, we got a couple of cameos here. I said, dude, I'm not doing a cameo. <laughs> I, 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 
Jimmy, I'd like to say hello to you. And, and in the background right now is Golden State there. You know, won't wish you a happy birthday, but Golden State right now is celebrating winning on the Celtics floor. No. So, so I think sometimes you, you, you just got to think it up a little bit more. And uh, that was one of the cases where I'm like, nah, I, I, I didn't have it for it after that. I, I'd given pretty much all I did as, a, as an analyst during that whole series. I was done. Yeah, I don't blame you, Max. I mean, that's a first for you, right? You've never seen that before. Have you ever seen an opposing team celebrate a championship on the parquet like that? Yeah, 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 I have. You have? Yeah, I was on the team. No, like, I mean, as a broadcaster, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. as a broadcaster. That's even, wor that's even worse, though. You're right. That's even yeah, worse as a player. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the opposing yeah. team. The Lakers came in, uh, 84. We beat them in 84. I had the huge seventh game. Um, and then... I'm on my back. Then 85, they came in here and they beat us in this building to, mm -hmm. to win it, to win the championship. And um, the, the probably one of the worst moments for me as a Celtic and the fact that uh, Casey Jones didn't even put me in the basketball game. And uh, that was just very disheartening as a mm -hmm. player. Not knowing, you know, knowing I was hurt, but it was still just like, Ugh, dude, you're down. You know, th do something, do a Hail Mary yeah. or something. You know, put me in the game to see if you can get a spark. So that was that was kind of rough with that last game. So yeah, I've had I've seen people celebrate. You know, on the parquet, uh, winning a championship. So either way, you weren't trying to do no cameo at that time. No, I, 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 I dig it. I get it. I'm good, dog. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good with the game. <laughs> well, yeah, like like you said about Gallinari, though, it, it, it gives them, in my opinion, it gives Emay some flexibility with the lineup, right? You can do some tinkering. You can put him in there as a starter. If, mm -hmm. if Al Horford needs, a, a, you know, a night off on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, which has already been reported by The Athletic, you know, a couple of weeks ago or last week, rather, um, you, you're able to do that with someone like Gallinari, who's going to give you that offensive production, who's going to force opposing teams to, to guard him, right? I mean, that's, again, we talked about it last week. That's just a weapon that Southern did not have you know, coming off the bench. Yeah, Derek White contributed in game one against the finals, but finding that, trying to find that consistency from your second unit, I think it has to be a goal going into this season. And I think these two guys certainly check off those boxes. And I like how you brought up the fact that Marcus Smart, you know, that's the last thing Brogdon wants to do. You know, he wants to compete. He wants to add to this team, as he said. You know, he wants to add to the talent. He, he knows how close these guys were. Everyone does. I mean, that's what happens. That's the luxury you have of mm -hmm. playing in the NBA final. Now other team, other players are like, wait, I can help those guys. I know what those guys need. And then you have someone like Gallinari who, 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 you know, left an offer on the table for the Chicago Bulls and wanted to sign with the Celtics because he thought that that would be a better shot for him to win a championship, you know? So that's and, that, you know and that's that's the good thing about it. I, I even, you know, moving, you know, just a bit away from that, it made me think when you talked about, you know, second nights of back-to-back -back and, and letting guys rest, it's real interesting to hear what the commissioner said. Uh, mm. when he was, he had the end of the, end of the state of the state uh, mm -hmm. and talking about how, you know, players need to be incentivized a little bit more in playing more games to give more incentive. I'm like, do you need to be? I think this was all all done, that low management stuff. It was all created really by Greg Popovich. Now, you know, said, so look, I'm, I'm resting my guys when I want to yeah. rest them. And, yeah. um, and, I, and I understand that part of, you know, if you were... And you know, you know what's... You know what's funny too? Not to cut you off, but real quick. Like, like, remember those B teams? They would still win sometimes. Like yeah. no Ginobili, no Duncan, no Parker. You know, and and they guys like Boris Diaw would step up. And, you know, Patty Mills or whatever. Like that was it was still a really good they, team. But they, it showed yeah. it showed your depth. It showed the depth that they had. Yeah. Yeah, they they had a system and they ran it well. I, I just believe at the end of the day that players are going to and it's unfortunate. I understand what they say about you know guys who. You know, if you were a fan and you, you know, saved all your money for one ticket and the Celtics were coming to town and and you find out that Tatum is not going to play and it's not because he's not hurt, but it's because mm. the day he needed rest. And that happens when, in almost any business where, you know, you have you have sick days. You can call in. I don't care if you're right. talking about, you know, basketball or not. It's still guys gives an opportunity to rest themselves so they can be a little bit fresher when you think about winning the championship. So it was really, it was something to hear the commissioner, uh, Adam Silva, talk about um, what they're going to try to do when it comes to players. 
And even look at even the thing to look over and saying how Indiana tried to make a huge splash and get DeAndre Aiden. Um, they they signed him to some kind of hundred and forty million dollar offer sheet uh, for for three or four years and forty million a year and and uh, it made Phoenix go back and say let's check that box we're gonna we're gonna match that. So I think you have to do that if you're Phoenix. Oh, because, what a mistake. Yeah, no, you well, have to. No, no, you're right. But what a well, mistake to let it go to this far. Why did well, you let it go this far? Man, that was that was there. He, he probably could have signed for less. You probably you had to make a decision better. weeks ago, Max. You can't just go into free agency and be like, oh, nobody's going to offer him anything. Like, this is this is a guy who helped you with a, with a key part in, in that run to the NBA. Well, finals. you know what? I, I, here's the thing, Joe Sway. And, and – you remember what happened with Marcus Smart? Marcus Smart was left out there and thought he was going to get more money than he did. And yeah. the Celtics offered him about $15 million, and I think they gave him $16 million at the end because he didn't have any takers. Uh, Abe wasn't going to be like that because he's a center playing this league. He can do so many other things, score the basketball for you. So for them to leave him unprotected and make him go out and get an offer sheet, good for him. And 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 mud in their face for allowing it, as you said, to get that far. Absolutely, I was. I, I'm not surprised that they matched it. But I was. I was surprised that Indiana swooped in there. And the first thing I thought was, oh, now they got to give him a bag. They got to give him the bag reluctantly. That's going to be an awkward conversation. Like, and yeah, and that that's something else too, which you know sometimes pisses a player off even more. In absolutely. Fact, it has Dude, to. I've, been, I've been loyal to you. We almost won the championship, but you didn't want to give me my bag until you're forced somebody, to give somebody me my else. Bag. Exactly. You, you knew someone else. Was going to give it. And sometimes you, you then players harbor, you know, they harbor some animosity towards the team, but um, that's kind of the way it goes. I think that's the gamble they took. And uh, for them, they got burnt this time. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. This episode of Cedric Maxwell Podcast is brought to you by Athletic Greens. So I started taking AG1 because I wanted a well-balanced diet and I wanted something to improve my everyday lifestyle. I didn't have the time. Wanted better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system. Hated taking pills, vitamins. I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. Wanted to see what the hype was about. All right, I know what you guys are probably guessing. What is this stuff, right? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, and aptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All the things. An extra dose of energy is always something that can help me get through my day. And what's great about AG1 is that it's lifestyle friendly. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything. While still tasting good. Support better sleep quality and recovery. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost him $100 a day. He created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on your own. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and is recommended by professional athletes. Right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Cedric. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Cedric to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. That's athleticgreens.com slash Cedric. Absolutely. All right, let's transition to across the uh, NBA. I guess we're already here, so to speak, right? Um, to what uh, a report from, from, from Fox Sports. Fox Sports is Rick Buecher, who's a, who's a veteran uh, reporter, NBA reporter, has been around since, man, since I was a kid. I used to watch him growing up. Uh, and this is what he wrote in his recent article. A league source says, Steph Curry has reached out several times to Durant, eager to improve his chances of winning a fifth championship and surpassing LeBron James, with, uh, with whom Curry is currently tied at with uh, 
four titles, Buker wrote. Um, Max, if you're Golden State, would you even consider a Kevin Durant reunion in San Francisco? Yeah, I would. You would? I would. I would right. because he's... I mean... He, because yeah, he, he's, he's, been in, he's been in that system before. When he came there before, he didn't buck the system. And Kevin Durant doesn't seem like he wants to... Yeah, you know, he, he's going to lead when he needs to, but he understands part of that that's still Steph's team. So if I'm Steph Curry and I got a, an opportunity to come out and get him after what they did with him, that's a no-brainer. I take that all day. You know, people's like, well, you know, he might tip the apple cart. Well, he tipped it and, and won you two championships and was a finals MVP in both. Well, almost, got a, well, almost got a third, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I get it. I would do the same thing if I'm Golden State. And you, you, this is, of course, without touching any any members of, the, of, the, of that core. Right. Um, I'm, I'm thinking no, of the surrounding. I don't I don't know how you would do that if you're them. No, I mean, that's the best I can do if I'm Golden State. I'm not going to send one of my guys after they won a championship. I'm not sending Clay or Draymond or not even no, Curry, obviously. No, but I mean, I don't know. I would. I would think Wiggins, about, Kaminga, Jordan Poole, something like that with a bunch of picks. I mean, Wiggins, Wiggins proved that where he was this year, and he was no nonsense, and he just got the job done. But Dude. I don't think that you could say – you can't tell me that he wouldn't be an upgrade for that team with his ability to score. As, as yeah. good as Wiggins was, what we know about Durant, Durant is that much better. Now – Ego wise, does he fit in? When you win with a team, I think that you could. Uh, who would they have to give up? Maybe a Wiseman, Wiseman, and would you give? You wouldn't give up yeah. Wiseman and um, and it, and to be Wiseman and Jordan Poole, or Wiseman, Jordan Poole, Kaminga, something like that. It'd have to be those three guys. Oh, even even if I was, you know, thinking, you know, the other way, would you put Wiggins in there? Would Wiggins be a guy? I would. I would. So, if I'm if I'm Golden State. I think about that really hard. Yeah, I would. I keep, I keep one core here, and Wiseman didn't do anything for him when they won this last championship. So, yeah, I, I could think about moving, and I think that would be a, a huge asset for, you know, a Brooklyn team getting a young big like that who is – Yeah, that's big. Who has no polish on him, and right. he may get some things done. Honestly, you look across the league, and, of course, I'm sure they're doing their due diligence and – you know, trying to figure out what's the best offer, what's the best that they can do. And I can't help but wonder is how, how far off is Golden State with an with offer like that? You know, you throw a big in there, Andrew Wiggins. Uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm spitballing here, right? Maybe three future first rounds. I mean, after what Gobert, after what these guys got for Gobert, maybe they got to throw in four future first rounders. You know, Kaminga, uh, uh, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole. That's not, a, that's not a terrible package, especially when you look at what they did in the NBA Finals. Yeah, yeah, that was big. I mean, well, I mean, Jordan you know, Poole is grown into Jordan Poole and Wiggins. Who he is? I am. Yeah, I could. I could see them doing that. Uh, you know, making that kind of move. Uh, you know, you know, Wiggins is is, is going to be there for a while. Uh, yeah. Poole, you might have to give end up giving them more money. But if you're Brooklyn, you want to make a splash. I could see that happening. And and I don't think I think it takes you out of championship contention though. But it. But if you get those guys it puts you into a mix of being able to start to attract other guys. And, and you, the one thing you don't want to be in New York, you don't want to be worse than the Knicks. You don't want <laughs> you do not want to be if you're broken right now after the year that they had and, and, and collecting pieces, it would just be horrible for Brooklyn to be sitting on the sideline going, you know, all that stuff. When a guy, you know, the public address guy goes, Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. so annoying. Yeah. So, mm. speaking of New York, uh, Max, you're not going to believe this, but uh, they're going to go into the, the organization. The Knicks organization is going to go into the the the, the new uh, season, and for the first time in the past what uh, six years, uh, <laughs> Joe Kim Noah is not on the payroll. I heard that. <laughs> How I crazy that. is that? <laughs> Well, God bless them. New York. Uh, I wanted to surprise you with that. You heard it? Oh, no, I read it today <laughs> with uh, that, but New York teams have done some crazy stuff. 
That's uh, wild, though. Who is the um, one of the this guys? This man hasn't played basketball for the Knicks in three years, man. That's well, insane. it's worse than that. Didn't the uh, the Mets still are Four paying? Um, the Mets are still paying right now. Um, who's that guy? Bobby Bonilla. Bobby Bonilla is still getting paid right now from the Mets, like three million dollars a year. So something crazy. So it's chill. Uh, just the, so the, the New York teams do some crazy stuff, and and you know, they'll <laughs> they'll invest in something, and all of a sudden they'll they'll uh, you know de-invest with it. You know, you think about how Kimba came there, and it was like he had that one game against us, and then after that, it was like, Ooh, yeah. all right, Kimba, you're on the bench, you're not gonna play anymore. It's like, yeah. damn, that was quick. And I heard. It. Well, people, they were like, we've seen this movie before, guys. Let's just yeah, I, I, so. I've heard some people in Charlotte telling me that uh, they wouldn't mind having Kimber as a, you know, a backup, uh, backup point guard. So, I, you know, yeah, you, we'll see. You wish the best for Kimber. Such a nice dude, man. And yeah, you know, things do happen, but that's how this league is. Yeah, that's how it is, man. It's it's just unfortunate because you know the kind of guy he is and the kind of a hard worker, but. Your body's saying wanting on another thing, and you wanted to do something else, and it's just it's something well, you can really do at this at this stage in your career, you know. It, as you and I like to say, keeping on the hundred, get your bag first. He got his bag, he got he paid, did. and he now yeah. now you establish something for your afterlife in basketball, which is absolutely norm- normally going to be a lot more than you know your 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 playing days. I mean, right. consider I played eleven years. And I've been a broadcaster for 26 years. So wow. your playing your playing days, uh, you know, I know it would have been longer now with health and everything like that, but you know, maybe after they got to 15 years. But you still mm-hmm. gonna your other career, you got a lot of life left once you uh, you know, come out of the game. Yeah, I wanna be BX is fine, for sure, man, from the Bronx, New Yorker himself as well. Um, before we uh transition from Kevin Durant, you know the question I'm gonna ask you, right? The hypothetical, if this Golden State thing were to happen, what happens to uh, Durant's legacy? Does it tarnish his legacy if he wins another one with these guys? If he wins another two, is there only much for him to gain at this point? Is he a failure for the Brooklyn thing? What do you, what do you, how do you, how do you tarnish his gain? How do you tarnish his legacy? He's a two time finals MVP. He has been, uh, he's been a multiple times, uh, you know, he was a, a MVP. In the league, he yeah. has been uh, All Star games how many times? So, th- to me, if you start you you nitpicking when you start thinking about well, it's going to tarnish his legacy if he goes back and wins another championship. No, it doesn't. I heard people saying stuff about him like, well, he didn't make this guy better. He didn't make this guy better. Well, you know that doesn't always happen. But what he did, he won two championships, and you can never take that take that away from you know, who he is. He arguably is one of those those guys. Again, if he moves wherever he moves, he changes the needle. Mm-hmm. And the needle is going to move one way, one way or the other. And most of the times when Kevin Durant gets there, that needle is pointing upward uh, to your you, you know, getting the opportunity to win the championship. Yeah. No, I mean, the reason I asked is it's just because I, I can't help but wonder, well, not even wonder, but I... I I feel like a lot of it, him leaving Golden State in the first place, had to do with him wanting to just start start over in the sense of, of being, look, I I built this, you know, I. But again, Durant, the kind of guy who listens to the narrative out there, Max, he hears the people saying, "Oh, you had to join those guys to win championships. Oh, you had a three-one lead against those guys, and you still couldn't beat them." I can't help but wonder. That gets to him. That gets to him. Come on, you Max. Always said the this. burner account, the Twitter burner account. Careful what you ask for. You might get it. He wanted he wanted Kyrie Irving uh, with him in Brooklyn. How'd that work out for him? That was a mistake. That was I a know mistake. That. Never... So at, at that point, be careful what you ask for. You never never can tell. To yeah, me, but what are, Nets, what are Nets fans going to say, though? What are they going to say? Like, I don't, what saying? I, I don't you care quit. what you You got four years on your contract, and you quit already. And, wait a minute. Let me see, what's, let me see what that's going to do to me if you told me that. <laughs> I'm leaving there with about uh, almost 160, 70 million. And you think how Durant feels? Yeah, you think you're criticizing? Now, he would take it maybe differently and be pissed off. Me, I'd be like, hmm, 
let me see. I'm going to go someplace where I can win another championship. And I can tell everybody just to eat humble pie. I mean, it's the same way if you look at um, Draymond. As much shit as I talked about him and other people talked about him, Draymond at the end of the day won. He won another championship. Yeah. Now, is he the... He's enjoying he, his last laugh, Max. You know that. He's all, it's all yeah, good. and that's for him. And it might good for him. You should. Who, who knows? It might not be his last laugh. So I mean, he's just in, he's in a perfect position in the catbird seat, where you know the, the, his his skill set is perfect for what they do for that team. He would not be perfect for the Boston Celtics or a lot of other teams because they require you to score. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Well, what's your prediction? Do you think uh, what, what happens here? Does he ultimately get his wish? Does he, is he dealt? Does he stick around? Does he? I don't think he's going to hold this organization hostage. I don't think he's that kind of guy that's going to force himself I to think, sit out. But I think that he's going to move and go someplace. And okay. but Brooklyn is holding the cards now because they have, you know, they have him under contract. So what is, what is he going to do if he says, you know, hey, we want you to stay, and he comes back, but. How does it look if, in fact, now he decides to stay in Brooklyn? What kind of animosity does the fan base, as you say, have towards him? Is he able to be, and what we know about him, is, is, is he thick-skinned enough to accept that kind of criticism from his home, from his home fans? And there was, a, there was a real, I mean, you can go back and probably Google this or whatever it is, but... Um, Durant was on the court in Brooklyn. And some fan who was in the front row said, Kevin, you got to take over this game. And the referee looked at him. And Kevin turned around and looked at the fan and said, I know what you need to do. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and the referee, looked, looked, the referee looked at the guy and looked at Kevin like, I, I can't believe you said that to your own <laughs> fan. So big skin that he's not. You know, for me, it would be like... You you said what about me? And and I'm living here winning the chat. I, I wouldn't get into those things. Yeah. If there's one thing that I wish that he would do, is that he would he's one of the few guys that just take the phone and throw it away, bro. Take it and throw it away. Oh, you put a you limit know, on that thing. You put don't like an hour know, day don't limit or limit on it. Just stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you don't need that. You, you don't need you. You are you are. You know. I remember seeing this in Thor. You are ant. You're you're a giant with a boot on, and those other people are ants. And and you know you just use that boot to stomp them. But he can't he can't do that. I mean the the to to have a battle right now with that guy Nick Joso. Well, what what is that about? Yeah, and this isn't this isn't the first time either. Like, well, what's going you, on here? And if you're Kevin Durant. You're giving you're giving that kind of guy credibility. Yeah. Instead of ignoring it, nobody be like Nick who? But he's now, oh, the guy who fought with, you know, who's going back and forth with Durant. You give people fuel. Uh, I mean, so I, I like to normally take that fuel away, but uh this crunk kind of crazy. And according to reports, he's 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 gone dark. He's not talking to a bunch of people, you know, he's not you know, reaching out to guys, and he he did pull up to different places and making public appearances, but he's 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 been he's been tight lipped. Let me do let me two two words here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to you don't want to hear him talking. As a reporter, I know they must be going crazy. But as a guy who loves who's a big Kevin Durant fan, that's what I'd say. I say Kevin, <laughs> go dark. Go dark, bro. <laughs> you you ain't got to, you ain't got to go back and forth. Let your agent take care of that business. You want to enjoy the summer. Here's the thing. He's one of, and I'm pretty sure he was, wasn't he? Wasn't he one of the top 75 players of all time? He was. Yeah, he's in. He's in there. Dude, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of guys are probably playing the NBA. And one of the greatest scores. One of the greatest scores. Yes. Honestly. Yes. So you you're having a fight over somebody in the basement because they're tweeting tweeting something about you. I mean it's like sometimes he, you know, the the whole Draymond thing, 
I mean, I scanned just for one second just to see some people saying something bad about me. But I wasn't re- trying to respond to those guys. Yeah. Those guys who are responding, who are, are, are going at me on Twitter, let me say, none of them have ever played a fucking game in their life. Not the <laughs> NBA game. Not, the Not NBA at this game. level. They right. might have played in the backyard. They might have played uh, in college or whatever it is. But I ain't seen one of those guys yet, you know, <laughs> in, the, in the league. So right. you're telling you, oh, you know, all you could shoot was layups and all you did was this and you did that. Well, look, I'm, I was in the league. I made history in this league. And you can hate me, do whatever it is you want to and say I'm full of shit or, you know, oh, my God, I wore, you know, I came on Larry Bird's coattails. Well, that's not true. Larry Bird's first championship, I was there. I was the finals MVP. His second one that he won versus the Lakers, that was my 24-8-8 game. So I've, I've been able to, I wasn't driving the bus, but I wasn't in the back seat either. Mm-hmm. So so I'll put it to you like that with, with people who want to, you know, just kind of belittle you and go at you. And, you know, like I said, we and we appreciate you guys to subscribe. And even, even, the, even <laughs> with that even being the, said, even the people who hate me, Josue, God bless you for coming on. Give me this time in your life to be even to be critical about me, uh, critical over me. I, I love it because that means you have stopped your day to formulate a sentence about me. I'm that important in your world mm. to at least be in your your mind for uh, I have a small little condo in your in your head. <laughs> yeah it's true well said well said well you know let's transition to this former uh a former celtic who who's recently spoken out about what lebron james said uh on a recent episode of uh his his barbershop show on hbo it's called the barbershop hbo barbershop lebron's barbershop uh he talked about Brittany griner and what's going on uh, who's everyone knows wnba star <laughs> Brittany griner uh it's in a russian jail cell for on on drug charges she's she's she pled guilty she's facing up to 10 years uh, they take marijuana really seriously over there. Um, and LeBron James spoke about it, uh, at least a brief clip of the, of the new episode that's going to debut. And he said, uh, I don't want to make sure I get this right. And I quote, um, now, how can she feel like America has her back? I would be feeling like, do I even want to go back to America? Guess who uh, recent former Celtic responded? Probably, I don't know, within 48 hours, as soon as he heard about it, probably. Uh, and that's Cantor Freedom. Spoke out. <laughs> Calling out LeBron James. <laughs> Right, shocker, right? You're shocked. No, freedom. He tweeted. He tweeted this out. You can call it a step back. We call it. We call this a walk back. You are free to leave, buddy, or you can even volunteer for an exchange for her. Some people literally have, in capital letters, no idea what it's like to live in a dictatorship. Keep taking your freedom for granted. What do you think about that? Well, you know, all of us can talk a certain way because we have the freedom to 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 speak out and with Cantor what he's saying he lived in the dictatorship where he was he he wasn't allowed he can't even go back to Turkey right now to mm-hmm. see part of, part of his family because years he, ago he couldn't even go to Canada yeah he was you know they could have they, grabbed him yeah. yeah well he could go to Canada but what oh, now he can, but before he was But afraid. what they wanted to do, they wanted to have security around him when he came in the building. And right. so, yeah, I don't, I, I think in, in, in certain cases, LeBron's been so spot on. In this case, and maybe again, I, I'd have to hear him say it. But in this case, this one time I don't agree with LeBron when it right. comes to get your back with what I want. That girl couldn't wait to get back here. When she when she hits, I guarantee you, when she finally hits America's soil, she's gonna go down and kiss the ground here in America and say, Thank God I'm I'm home. I'm yeah. home. But LeBron to say, you know, America got us back and all that stuff was like, okay. Now you said the whole thing and and about you talk about marijuana use and they take it serious. I don't know if they take it as serious. They take it more serious because she was a celebrity. Who she is. Who she is. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. The average average Russian can get over there and smoke a joint in Red Square 
and nobody probably wouldn't say a word to him. But because it's, she's- It's political, yeah. yeah but it's a political the theater she's in right now. Uh, she's been, she, they're making an example. And- Yeah, but she, Max, let me, ask, let me ask you this though. If it was, I don't know, Damian Lillard or Donovan Mitchell, you think they would be over a hundred days by now still in custody? That is, and listen, listen, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me be that's clear though. Let me be clear. Bad, this isn't just about gender based, but it's about it's about business. It's about the bag. And let's face it. In my opinion, this has a lot to do with the fact that there's think that not that the government is not taking it seriously, but I feel like enough, not enough people are taking this thing seriously, or not enough people are trying to you know outrage or even. Uh, protested, you know, because it, the, the 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 lack of but you know, know what, you, viewership, you, the lack of fans yeah, compared to NBA. But, yeah, but you know, you can protest all you want to. At the end of the day, the Russians have the opportunity to keep her there. She did. She pleaded guilty because she feels like, and I think she's rolling the dice that they're saying, "Okay, time served. Go ahead and go home." I can tell you this: once she gets back here, she ain't gonna never want to. She ain't gonna want to uh, drink no Grey Goose. Anything from Russia, she'd be like, "Oh man, I think Grey Goose is from Russia. I'm not sure, but you know, <laughs> Russian vodka, so Stolies, or whatever." Any any, any vodka, she's like, "Nope, yeah, yeah, <laughs> nope, I'm good. Not doing it. I'm good. I'm keeping that on the hundred. I don't want none of that. Nah, no thank you. You know, no, I'm good." <laughs> I just feel like the attention around this thing, it took way too long, man. Like, uh, look, I, I commend the, the Celtics, you know, members of the Celtics team wearing the BG shirts, you know, Warriors players wearing the BG shirts, you know, uh, we are BG during the NBA finals because that's the grand stage. That's when you're going to get the most eyes. That's when you're going to get people in the QR code. I thought was brilliant. Guys can see, people can scan their phone. Oh, what's BG? You know, and then boom, it's right on your phone and you can, you're, you're, you're caught up to speed. You didn't have to put WNBA or Brittany Griner or anything on there like that. Um, so I thought that was good that these guys are stepping up and they're being vocal, but I just, it's, it's a bit disappointing that this isn't on the news as often it's, as it should be. But you know, I think it, I think that that news cycle for what she's done, that news cycle just goes just so you don't stay in the news cycle forever. It's like, you know, once she, once she comes home, then what do you think the next cycle is going to be? She might be with her for a couple of days. And after that, she might be in a new set of, a WNBA game and uh, that, that news cycle is going to go away quickly because uh, I just don't think it has the, as you're saying right now, has the clout or the imagination mm -hmm. for the American people with all the things going on right now. I think that when you talk about inflation, gas is down near $5 plus almost $6 a gallon. I think, and it's just unfortunate that I think that People don't think about Brittany Griner, but she is on that back page right now that yeah. people aren't interested in that, that subject. Well, she did um, send a letter to uh, President Biden saying not to forget about her and that she sure, you know, she, she understands how busy he is and um, she hopes that uh, they, they can do the best that they can. I That's mean, what you think. You think you have to send a letter to President Biden saying don't forget that's about what, That's what's. CNN was telling me, man, CNN said the Brady, that's what she wrote. According to her lawyer, uh, that was verbatim. A, a few of the I know, I mean, that do, you think, do you think that she has to write the letter for, the, 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 for him to say, hey, please don't forget about me, sir? She doesn't have to, but if I was her, I'd be writing every week. You know, <laughs> man, I'd be hitting up Joe. I'd be like, yo, Joey, what's good? Don't forget about me, bro. Like, I would be hitting him up all the time. Well, I think it is... You know, I can't wait for her to I like come. my freedom, Max. I really like my freedom. Oh, so, God. No, that's just, that's, that's why, just me. And that's why I'm saying what LeBron said is kind of crazy. When you think yeah. about, when you think about, you know, she might not want to come back. Man, she can't, she can't wait to get back. Right. She, she can't wait for that plane to land someplace. And, 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 and not for nothing, though, Max. Also, if I'm Brittany, I'm like, man, I'm not in your tax bracket. Maybe you can go up and live in some other country, but I got to get back to play. I got to keep, you know what I mean? Like, got to get paid. I need to like, get paid. Right. And that's her best opportunity is to come back into the States. Uh, yeah. It, it kind of, yeah. yeah I got to, I got to hear the, I don't know the context of it. Cause again, it was like, what, 30 second clip of that episode. But I guess we'll find out soon when they, when they debut, debuts on, on HBO, uh, the new episode of, of, of LeBron James's uh, The Barbershop. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out, bro. We'll find I out. I guess that's barbershop talk, though. You know, people do say some outlandish shit, so I guess that does 
I guess that kind of is fitting what he said. <laughs> you ever be in a barbershop where you're going back and forth with somebody and the other dude's getting so mad because he's losing the argument and he just says something so ridiculous and he tries to convince himself in front of everybody and everyone's like, no, you don't believe that, man. You, yeah. just, tried, <laughs> you just got and, boxed in. Like, maybe there, that's what happened. There is something... <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think it was brilliant on, on LeBron James's part to bring the barbershop in because it oh, is, like it's always been one of these places where opinions and things oh, that man. happen. And, and it's Thank like, you. you walk in, it's like, damn, man, you want to, oh, how about, oh, I can't believe you said that, that Draymond yeah. or, or Draymond followed you or that, so, why did the Celtics win? Or, like, oh, when you got the floor. And everyone's listening to you, and you're just going in the middle of your shit, and someone's you know, going back and forth with you. And like, oh man, it's good. Barber shop, man. That is a barber shop. Yes. And he's got different guests every time. And man, one episode he had uh Tom Brady, uh, who else? What was it? Kid Cuddy was one of my favorite musicians who like not a lot of people know about. Like it, he'll get like a random group of people of actors, and I, I like that because you everyone has their own point of view and unique perspective. Well, did did you know? he get uh, did he get something 40? What, what's 40's name? E forty, <laughs> yeah. When you call him W forty, I lost it. Man. <laughs> I, you, man. I ain't mad at him, but I didn't know who he was. Dude, I'm sixty seven. I don't know those damn E forty. No, I know, I know, man. I don't think you know, not, but it's just funny. No, it's no offense to no offense to him at all. You know, he could be one of the greatest rappers out there and doing his thing. That's just not my. That's not my my table setting right now. It's I don't know that's, that. That's not your ping pong table. I got you. No, <laughs> like, like the ping pong back at you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. All right. You go. <laughs> yeah, I love the way he introduced himself, man. He was he was really formal. That's how that's how you got to do. You always got to respect your elders at all time. What was his name? Earl Earl South African. He he gave you his government name, which cracked me up. I had no idea what his. Oh, name. I didn't even know he gave me that. I thought somebody was yeah. doing it. Somebody was introducing his something forty. I didn't know. Like, <laughs> something funny. It was it was Gary. Gary was like, "Oh, hey, this is E forty. This is <laughs> you know." I don't know what my thing, funny exchange, man. Oh, forty exchange. forty acres and a mule. That's far as I can go with you, bro. That's all. I, that's all I got. I ain't got no more than that. <laughs> oh, that's a classic line right there. Yeah. Where did that come from, by the way? I learned it from rap. That's the thing about when you listen to a lot of rap music, you hear these old sayings and classic. Well, what, what was what was that drink back in the day that people? Did people say that going back? Is it let's go get a forty? Is that 40? oh yeah 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 forty on yeah yeah, 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 forty. Get, yeah yo man that's about as good as I can get yo man let's go do a forty man it's like okay if I had to guess Max if I had to put money on it that part of that probably inspired this man I'm guessing get oh, forty okay. that forty part <laughs> I get that. oh man that was hilarious. Good stuff. I can't wait to you. I want to see what other kind of rappers you run into, man. It'd be funny. Only one I can remember uh, being close to was when I think I was actually in my was in my late thirties, and they had a club in Atlanta, and it was called Thirty Up. So you had to be thirty and above to get in it. And I'm on the oh, dance. Oh man, floor. where's that club at now? No, no, it's been gone. But I'm on the <laughs> dance floor. I'm, I'm giving them my best moves. I'm, you know, and my thing, think I'm going. But there's a guy beside me, and he's just like, yeah, he he work. I mean, this dude is working. I'm like, damn, who is this dude? Finally realized. Was, oh no. Dude, finally he realized it was MC Hammer. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the club, yeah. Getting it. Getting it. Like, like he was performing on the show. He did that, you know, that spin. Yeah, what are you doing, like, the, the leg thing? Yeah. Like, all oh, that no, he hadn't, he, hadn't, he hadn't gotten the typewriter yet. The typewriter wasn't in. Where he <laughs> the typewriter. Was for me. I, it wasn't, that wasn't it. Let's call the typewriter or is it the piano? Which one is it? Uh, Yo, this is before my time, Max. I don't know. I just remember the. I, yeah. I just I just remember seeing highlights of those, those those baggy, ridiculous pants, and he was like going back and forth, like, go oh, hammer, go hammer, something like that. It, that and you're gonna make me go now. So you're gonna go make me watch a video right now of <laughs> MC Hammer, man. Just see what the hell happened. Oh man! All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on some MC Hammer videos, and everyone enjoy. Y'all go enjoy y'all weekend, man. We'll check in with y'all next week. How much time? <laughs> Because if you do hammer time, you keep it on the hundred, bro. You keep it on the hundred. I think 
I, if I had to guess, that, was that one of the few people where you were like not into, but you were like, he's, he's entertaining. You must have sort of liked him. But... Oh, I loved MC Ham. I loved MC Ham. I went and saw him at the show one time. And... Did you really? Is that yeah. the only rap show? That's a yeah, rap was... show, Max. You went well, to a rap show. I think Ham wasn't a rapper, though, man. I don't think I think that rappers would be offended if you said MC Ham was a rapper. <laughs> what do you think he said? What do you he, he really <laughs> was a, M- MC Hammer was a, 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 an entertainer, but not yeah. a rapper. I don't think of him being a rapper. He wasn't. He yeah. was a rapper. He he he, he has such a mixture. And the reason they call it MC Hammer was because he used to be a ball boy for um, I think it was the Oakland Athletics, and he would oh, be okay. dancing. And somebody said, "You look like Hank Aaron," so that's why they call him the Hammer. Uh. MC Hammer. I that's didn't he, know it. That's how he got the nickname. Did you talk to him in the club that day in Atlanta? I did not. And I've never, I've never really spoke. I'm trying to think. I very seldom have I. I don't, you know, me, I'm not a person that speaks to a lot of celebrity people. You know, I, just, I got some people, that, you know, like a Denzel, uh, you know, people like that. But I can't name a lot of people that, you know. No, you met you met uh, you met Bill Clinton like three years ago. That was pretty cool. Yeah, but I don't. It, yeah, yeah, but I'm just talking about just current celebrities right now. I can't have like I see LeBron James or or I see um, who is it? Um, Magic Johnson has a trip he does every year with his yacht, and he takes LL Cool J with him. You know, and and I remember wow. seeing all those people, Queen Latifah at Kobe's thing, and it was just like wow. Mm. Really, it's, it's 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 interesting to see how they would be in real life. Yeah, real life, real life. What is what is what is LL Cool J about? That mm-hmm. those the, what, that would be interesting. I know people always say that you know that that they would like to know the same thing about the most athletes, but that would that would be something that you know the because I think athletes. And rappers, rappers all want to be, yeah. Bad. All the rappers want, and then for a while, all the basketball players want for to be a while rappers. they wanted to be rappers. <laughs> so the the, the union, yeah, the youngins the two, they go back and forth. You think about Dame Lillard. This, this this generation doesn't know. Okay, well they know about Dame Lillard, but they remember when Allen Iverson tried to rap? They remember when Kobe Bryant was in a rap video? He had a verse of the brain he saw. Kobe had some bars. Like that yeah. was the thing. Shaq about, had a couple of albums. How about Shaq had some balls? Shaq had some albums. He had, he had Biggie on, on one of his songs. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, you know, that, that was, was a legitimate thing. That was one when he was on the thing where that was he was rapping, talking about Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. <laughs> Damn, Shaq. I forgot all about that. And that was 24 hours after the Celtics beat the Lakers in the finals, man. Oh, Dude, wait. Well, Petty. Petty, Dude, Petty. Want to have, want to, a lot of uh, basketball players want to have studio, put studios. Yeah, that's true. They're in their house. Because they, you know, they want to legitimately be, you know, kind of rappers. Yeah. And, but you and the, rappers, the rappers love the, the, the ball of lifestyle, too. You know, yeah. The, and the, art, uh, the competition. Man, you think about it, that's what Snoop was saying. It was Snoop and Kevin Garnett. That yeah. video together it was like he said and kevin garnett said it most most he said and snoop said he said y'all want to be like us and we want to be like you and he was mm-hmm. referring to the the two cultures which you think are you know kind of crazy like that absolutely the ones that i grew grew into and still into it till today man All i mean life, who, man. Hip, hip, hip-hop and basketball yeah but who are your rappers that you think about when you say okay this guy right here is a rat, and then I'm gonna see though I know who the hell you're talking about. Your go to, oh your go to five rappers. Now, right now, your go to oh, five rappers. Oh man, Kendrick's number one right now. He's got the best album of the year. Kendrick Lamar. I don't know, don't know nothing about him. What? I put you on the Kendrick J Cole. Kendrick, I like Kendrick I Lamar. I've never, I've met, I don't know if I've ever heard the song that he's had. You should listen to All Right. That was a huge uh, during Black Lives Matter movement when it first like that was a, that was a rally cry for the, uh, we you gonna be all right. You, know, you might recognize if you're here. We gonna be all right. We go. I also it. it's vulgar. You'll like it. Uh, who else? Kendrick, J. Cole. Um, still, a, I'm still a Kanye guy. Uh, his his, his no, best no, music is. 
Okay. His best yeah. music is behind him, but I still I still listen to his new stuff. Okay. Uh, like I said, Kid Cudi. I like Kid Cudi. I'm different yep. though, you know. I'm I'm a little I'm I'm a little you know. But is, guys like Kendrick and Jake Cole, is, they're mainstream for sure. Is, is 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 Drake a rapper? Drake's a rapper, yes. But he just dropped like a dance album. But yeah, yeah he's doing a little that's bit different. What I'm saying, do you consider him a rapper right now? I do. I just wish he would do it more often. Like I love his older stuff when he was he was more of a strictly a rapper who would also sing the hook. Now it's sort of the other way around, and his albums are like you know mostly ballads. And you get like a few songs with it where he's rapping, but yeah, I miss the old Drake, as, as some people would say. For wow. sure. oh. Take care of his best album, in my opinion. So some yeah, so out there. only one I can think about that you know that I they, the one rapper that I, the guys used to laugh at with me laugh about me all the time because I used to wear I used to wear a Tupac shirt. So they used to, to wear Tupac shirts. Hey, Tupac! I was now Tupac. I, they're still right now. There are a lot of stuff that I still like that, you know, that might be one of the few guys on my playlist that I, you know, all, right. eyes, on, all eyes on me and... Uh, oh, Max, if you ever want to pull up with the Beamer and we can go blast some all eyes on me with the top right. down, yo, I'm, I'm love, down, I'm a top. Uh, Pitching <laughs> me rolling. That was, yes, one of my yes. that, was, that was one of my favorites right there. Yo, I have rolling. no idea. What? Yeah. <laughs> All Eyes on Me is a classic. Me Bitch against the world. Rolling. When there's someone, yeah, they shit the, you know, the, the DA, she has a lot to say about me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me now. Where am I right now? Picture me rolling. <laughs> I was like, damn. Damn. That's fresh. That's, that's, that, that's Pac. That's Pac fresh out of jail, Pac, right there. Whoa, yeah. You get a lot. I told him, I told him when I get home, it's on. It's like, damn. Tupac. It's like, man, that's he's he will live like him and Biggie. Those are the guys I would say. And I'm a huge Biggie guy. I would have been out I would have loved to have seen Biggie because this is some of his raps. He would come to the studio with nothing written down. And yep. just free, freestyle. freestyle, freestyle. The closest I think I've ever been to rappers probably was um, in Cleveland, of all places. Rick oh, yeah? Patino, what was that? Rick Patino. Uh, Rick Patino a, got bars. He be rapping. What? No, no, no. We were at the. <laughs> we were at the. Uh, we we're coming up for an exhibition game in Cleveland, okay. late one night. And uh, we come from Boston. It's well, we went late at night. It's probably around about eight or nine o'clock getting into the hotel. But performing at the set uh, at the um, Gun Arena now, or whatever it is now. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that. Was um, uh, gosh, what my boy's name? Um, uh, um, uh, What's, what's the rapper's name? I'm forgetting his name. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Um, you, saw, you saw Wheezy? Yeah, it was Wheezy and... Um, what are they oh, called? Oh, Juvenile. Juvenile. Yeah, the Cash Money yeah. Millionaires. The Cash yeah, Money yeah, Millionaires. Yeah, oh, man. Yep, yep, yep. Cash that's Money how we, Millionaires. That's how we started out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in my, in my room, I'm going to be right beside... You know how you get a door that's adjoining to another room? Right. My room was beside this. I could smell smoke coming up. I had to put a towel in and all that. And them brothers didn't go to sleep forever. And I asked the lady, I said, excuse me, could you give me another room? She said, there are no more rooms, sir. Would you like for us to come up and say something to him? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you like, who play? Play. <laughs> Stop playing, lady. Stop playing. I don't want you to come and say, what the who? No, I'm good. I'm good. Did you catch him? You catch him in the hallway. They must have had the tall tees on. I did. Man. That was the, that was Coming the, in the hallway was um, Lil Wayne and Juby. Yeah. And Juby was coming wow. out. They looked like they. Juby's eyes looked like he had been smoking on the <laughs> bushes, not with bushes, because his eyes was was so glassy. I was like, damn. And I said, Rick Pitino was looking at all these kids when we walked in the hotel, like, where are we? This is a really car. <laughs> you know what he was thinking? Like, Why are rappers here? Let's go. Yeah. I thought this place was classy. Let's go. What's go what, what is going on? <laughs> what these rappers got money like that? Like, what? 
Yeah, yep, yep. They got money like that. <laughs> no, but you know he was thinking that shit. Look, who are these dudes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's how we started out, man. And he's he's a he's a he's a great Lil Wayne's up there for sure. He's one of the greats. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. So you you met you met a couple of greats then. Well, you met one of the greatest uh, guy to sell records, I guess, in, in MC Hammer. I don't I don't think I call him one of the greatest rappers, but you met one of uh, and well, Lil Wayne's one of the greatest. Uh, no, but you know, and, but Jay Z has had amazing, you know, staying power when it's come to. Oh, is, he, is he the best rapper ever from, from staying power and being around and being still being I relevant? Think so. I Jay-Z, think so. If Jay Z showed, he showed, he showed he that you can, you, you can one right now, you it would be a pack house. Exactly, and he's shown that he's one of the few artists in hip hop that there's longevity in this genre. Yeah, this, mm-hmm. this, this isn't. You know, I mean, hip hop as a genre is young if you compare it to other ones. But at the same time, I feel like everyone thinks it's just a young man's sport, which it is. But he carved out a niche where he he has his own space and, and that longevity. This is going to yeah. be what the fourth. The f- he's going into his fourth decade here. I mean, he hasn't dropped an album uh, since twenty seventeen, but he gets on songs, he does verses, and if he drops an album in this decade, it's going to be a four four decades of, of Jay Z music. You know, and they, they, and, and, and a lot of number one albums. And he's so distinctive, and when you hear him, and yeah. it's like I wouldn't think that Kanye West is a rapper. I think Kanye West is a great entertainer, and he brings things together. Like you were telling Producer, about, makes a lot of beats. Yeah, just like you telling me about the picture with Jalen Brown uh, and Kanye. Oh yeah, yeah. And, right before we started recording, he posted that on uh, Instagram with Kanye. Oh my, really? I need. Mean, I could. No, again. I don't know what their system is, but I know that uh, Brown is under his umbrella because he signed right. down with his entertainment group, Donna, so, Donna but, Sports Sports Agency. But yeah, what, that's right. what, does, what does that mean? I don't know. I think what everyone's going to be scratching their head about is uh, one of those pictures. There's a, there's a third guy in there. His name's Kyrie Irving. I yeah. think that's the part people are going to say, "Whoa, Celtics fans." Uh, if you haven't seen it, you, you're seeing it now. I mean, I, I'm sure by the time you watch this episode, you know you know exactly what we're talking about. But yeah, that uh, we we talked about that right before we hit record. But man, we'll see what happens. We'll dive yeah. into that next week. How about that? There's a tease for you guys because there's gonna yeah. be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of talk be, about that. That will be our teaser. So, anyways, we mm-hmm. say we going we gonna leave you guys. Keep it on the hundred. Anything go Absolutely. down? And if you guys have any. Thing that you would like for us to ever talk about any subject that you know you might think about me and Joe Sway are pretty diverse and um and uh we would love to use a subject that you guys wanted to talk about if anything, especially something we haven't we haven't even touched like yeah anything at all if anything at all subscribe but you know we I think that's what we want to do our next couple of broadcasts what we want to do, we want to get our fan base to ask a question or a subject matter that they want us to talk about, and we're going to try to dissect that. And it could be it could be about basketball, it could be about women, it could be about anything right now that's out here. And um, like I said, we we keep it on the hundred. So you know, that's we what we do. We're we going to give you our opinion. So again, hit that like button. Subscribe, but also send us a couple of questions, and we're gonna we're gonna hit something off big here and start uh, doing a couple of our podcasts on what you guys really want instead Absolutely. of us towards you. Doesn't have to be NBA or Celtics based at all. Let us know, and we'll we'll get into that next week. How about that? And then, uh, of course, any sort of developments from the uh, NBA Celtics, we got you covered as as always here at CLNS Media. On YouTube, Cedric Maxwell Podcast. Subscribe on iTunes, every platform that has uh, podcasts available. We're there, Cedric Maxwell Podcast, guys. And again, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. All right.